officially to the SOSU series. Today will be kind of a preparation episode to set you up for the episodes to come, in which I'll be interviewing various women and non-binary artists of color. We'll be discussing their artwork, the Black Lives Matter movement, and the movement that's happening right now within the DC theater scene. On top of talking about the issues at hand, we'll also be discussing some actionable things that you can do, yeah, you, right now, to make a change. If you have ever felt that there were less opportunities available for folk of your gender. If you have ever felt that there were less opportunities available for folk of your gender. Now, why do we seem to think that there are less opportunities for women and non-binary actors in the city? Well, that's because statistically speaking, there are. If we look at the plays that are being produced, the majority of them have more male characters than there are female characters. Now, one of the reasons this happens is because of the playwrights who are being produced. According to a DC theater demographic analysis, 69.75% of the playwrights being produced in the city are males, whereas 28.32% of them are females. And non-binary playwrights represent a whopping 1.93% of the playwrights who are being produced. Not much, huh? Now, while the percentage of female playwrights are being produced is up 8% from 2012, we're still looking at a huge gap if you consider yourself a person of color, if you consider yourself a person of color. Now let's dig into the race factor and the playwrights that are being produced. 79.16% of the playwrights are white writers, whereas 20.84% of them are people of color. So those numbers explain exactly why we know for certain that there are less opportunities for women and non-binary artists in the city let alone women and non-binary artists of color. According to a study by the Asian American Performers Action Coalition, only 29% of Broadway roles went to minority actors. Only 16.13% of roles on Broadway were cast non-traditionally, and 67% of the actors on Broadway stages were white, whereas only 33% of them were minorities. Now, when it comes to straight plays, those numbers are even more intense. 79.1% of the actors in straight plays on Broadway were white, whereas 14.5% of them were African American, 2% of them were Hispanic and Latinx, and only 1.2% of the actors in straight plays on Broadway were Asian. Now, when it comes to the pay difference between white actors and black actors, on average, black actors are paid 7.35% less than their white counterparts for straight plays. And for musicals, black actors are typically paid 14.54% less than their white counterparts. And we're not talking about after negotiations. We're talking about initial offers. Now, those numbers might not seem like much, but when you consider the fact that the only contributing factor to this pay difference is race, well, those numbers hit different. Now let's dig into some of the numbers inside of these plays. According to Broadway by number statistics, plays that are being produced on Broadway right now have 61% of characters who are specified as males, 32% of characters who are specified as females, 7.1% of characters who don't have a gender specified at all, and a whopping 0.27% of characters who are specified as non-binary. What does this mean? This means that on average, inside of a casting process for a Broadway production, women are only eligible for 39.1% of the roles, and non-binary artists are only eligible for 7.37% of the roles. Not much. If you've ever been told that you were hired because we were told we needed diversity. If you've ever been told that you were hired because we were told we needed diversity. But these numbers don't only apply to actors. It also applies to various roles inside of the technical theater world as well. Seven Broadway productions had zero women directors, choreographers, writers, sound designers, set designers, costume designers, light designers, hair designers, or makeup designers. Whew. Now let's look at some of the other numbers. 87% of directors in the Broadway world are men, whereas 13% of them are females. 76% of choreographers are men, whereas 24% of them are women. 
85% of the writers are men, whereas 15% of them are women. 70% of set designers are males, whereas only 30% are women. 78% of light designers are men, whereas 22% are women. 87% of sound designers are men, whereas 13% are women. 76% of prop designers are men, whereas 24% are women. Now, those numbers don't lie, but wait. What about the non-binary artists? If you have ever had to explain your gender identification to someone, if you've ever had to explain your gender identification to someone. When it comes to representation, non-binary artists are so underrepresented that a lot of the statistics didn't even include numbers for non-binary folk. Now, that's an issue. So why do these numbers matter? To me, these numbers represent the experiences of so many. Representation matters. Equitable representation matters real representation matters. And not just as a formality, but as an actuality. Every audience deserves to sit down in a theater and see their community reflected back to them, to see themselves reflected back. If theater is supposed to be a mirror to life, then all lives should be represented. <laughs> and I think the first step towards making this change is by addressing the facts. And if you're wondering where I got these facts, don't worry. I've included citation and other resources below. So feel free to check it out and be informed in your own time. Now, if you are a woman or non-binary artist of color with a theater skill set to offer, whether it be writing, directing, acting, light design, set design, whatever it may be, include your information below. Don't forget to include a link to your work and your pronouns so people know how to address you correctly. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the SOSU series. Don't forget to speak out and speak up. Until next time.